Hi, Blind Guy Garage. Again, um, Kawasaki Prairie again. This is the 650. Been working on it, doing other stuff. Make sure the camera's in the right format. It is. Okay, here we go. So, there's two bolts that go through these carburetors. I got them popped off because we have a leak coming through. We got fuel coming in here. And this thing is shooting gas out. I think that right there is the transfer tube. From one bolt to the next. It's hard to tell because the carburetors are right on top of each other. I mean, they're literally bolted together. So you take the two bolts out. And I'm looking through the camera and being blind is kind of a difficult thing. Here's the bolt. It's really long. It's uh, I believe that's an 8 millimeter. You can also use... I dropped it. 5 sixteenths, it hit me in the foot, so. Um, you can also use 5 sixteenths. It goes in the supply, where the, this, the carburetor that has the supply line, so like what the fuel line hooks to, it goes in that bolt side that direction. I don't know that it really matters what direction you put these in, but when you go to put them back on, I just put it back the way you took it off. But start on the nut first, and you won't have to hold. A lot of times you don't have to hold the bolt itself still because you can just take the nut loose on the one end. Um, handy dandy magnet from an old speaker. So they should kind of crack apart. This throttle linkage comes all the way through, goes to the other carburetor. There's actually an adjustment off in here for those. Also, you have like this right here. That comes, that's going to have little O-rings and stuff on it. I've got an entire kit. This thing was running fine. Um... It's not really these two car these carburetors are kind of fragile. I've had there's a an air bleed in here. You get to taking that stuff apart. I've had those crumble in my fingers before. So and it's impossible to find them. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe not for you guys, but it has been for me. And uh so these, the way they're configured and the way they're sitting in these machines is you can actually go through that area right there and pull the bowls off and actually pull the main jet and all of the other parts out of there, the, the floats and stuff. I do it on the KFX 700 and this, I've done it on one of the brute force and uh, didn't, didn't have no trouble. But I will tell you, if you're not good at working without being able to see what you're doing, like without seeing your hands or the screws or anything, um, you're going to have one heck of a time doing it. Um, I can do stuff like that because, well, my curse is a blessing sometimes. And uh, I don't have my... Um, another thing is you can... Once you get used to fooling with carburetors, you can kind of tell that's good. Um, by how fast these close, the slides close. Um, but anyhow, I think this thing is fine on all of that. It possibly could use some Berryman's or sea foam or something like that in the fuel to kind of help, uh, just maintain and clean the carburetors and clean deposits and stuff out. But, um, the reason, another big reason why I'm not fooling with opening them up because they've been, somebody's been in them before. And, um, was not very careful on making sure we didn't screw up a bunch of screws. So all of the float bowl screws are boogered up pretty bad. See, maybe they won't pop apart just yet. I don't know if we can get enough light over here because my shop's not very well lit. Like I said, vision's overrated, but... 
I work without it all the time, so. Um, and I'm pretty sure it was just two bolts that go through there. And, uh, I want to go grab my tripod to hold the phone over here. Um, I'm doing just a, should be pretty clean audio and everything today because, on this video, because, well, it's like well after midnight. And, uh, I just kind of had a full day of other stuff. Not really any any time of working, and I need to get this done. Um, so, I'm going to pause this and come back. And there's, I guess that's a YouTube thumbnail screen popped up on my phone here. Anyhow, we're going to pause, and I'll come back, and I should have it on the tripod. All right, I rolled the machine forward because it looked like it would just have bar barely any, if pretty much no light over here. I'm looking through the camera, I'm trying. To, I'm gonna try to keep everything in focus, but here they go. They popped apart, and I took the choke pieces loose. So right here, the little brackets and stuff that hold the two chokes together. And, uh, I mean, they're moving around. You're just going to have to kind of move them and pop them loose, you know, from each other. And there's O-rings. This here, this here is antifreeze going through that. So you gotta make sure you don't get them mixed up. I've actually done that once. Got them mixed up and filled the carburetors up with um, Deburn antifreeze. All right, both the O-rings came out with the part, and I couldn't tell. It sounded like something fell, but Nothing looked like it was, from what I can see, nothing feels like it's missing. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything missing. It went, now something did just fall. I think that was... Well, I'm sorry, but right now I'm looking for whatever just what whatever that was. It just fell. I'm doing it this way because the screws are so damaged. I just don't want to take stuff apart too far and then have to chase down all the problems. Oh yeah, uh, it, was a, it was a spring. That I think goes right here. Yeah, so I'll put that over here. So I think that spring 
goes on yeah so it's a wonderful little setup and I say that with great sarcasm massive amounts of sarcasm so this spring had this carburetor has a return spring on it this one here this carburetor does not and see this little finger here see how that is there's a spring that sits on here on where my left finger is and then I forgot about this stuff too it's been a while since I took these apart this kind of stuff apart um, and it goes in this gap right here so if you'll see kind of this piece goes here that piece goes there and then the spring goes between this I think this and that right there so the spring goes here and goes there and then this screw right here pushes on the back of this plate and so the spring helps keep the slacks keeps this pushed up against the plate and that helps you tune this carburetor being open the same amount as the carburetor in front of it uh, I think I can get that back together Here's this little transfer tube. This is where I believe my problem is. It's definitely I don't know if you can tell, but the and I this is kind of gross, but I have to put this stuff in my mouth sometimes so I can get a good view of what it is honestly if that makes sense because you know you can't see any detail but um these o-rings right here are rock hard so whoever got into these before didn't mess with this they rock hard since they've been sitting here they've more than likely dried out shrunk up and now they're just spraying gas past them because the machine runs great. And those, I mean, they're, not only are they rock hard, I don't think they're above the, this one here, I don't think is above the, the landings of the plastic at all. If this is plastic, of course, you're going to have to be very careful. Um, you got to take this stuff off with a, yeah, it feels like, the o-ring feels like plastic Let's see if we can I'm get the old leatherman out and see if I can pick those Use one of the attach one of the many different blades on this thing to get that out of there. Kind of pick that up and try not to break it, the O ring anyway. Mainly because you know you got to use that to find the one that's in the kit. And I mean, it, if these carburetors were untouched. And they didn't have all those screws rounded off. I'd be all over it. But right now, I'd be doing a complete rebuild on these carburetors. And just, just for the heck of it, since we've got a kit. Um, but these two little, ouch. These two little, ouch. Hey, I need to quit doing that. That hurts. Um, these two little O-rings right here. Good Lord. I'm going to have to bring it over here. Sorry. They're so dried out and rigid. It's taking a lot of force. And I just don't want to stab my finger anymore. Yeah, so this dude is 
cracking and just dry it out. This ethanol fuel, guys, is just horrible. This stuff just can't handle it. It doesn't need to sit with this mess on it in it. There's no telling. I got a, I've got got one of these machines, a Kawasaki Prairie. My, I think mine's a 700. It says a 650 on it. It probably is a 650. The guy that I got it from said that it's not a 650, that it's a 700 with a 650 body, but I doubt it. It's good. This, that, but that thing's got like, no joke, it has, I think, 7,000 miles on it, which is, in my opinion, a lot of depth gun miles. So I'm hoping that this kit it says it's for both carburetors the kit was really expensive from what I pay for kits because I buy cheap ones um, but it said it was 70 he said it was $75 and it's supposed to do both it feels like it's got everything in it That feels like the O-ring right there. We're going to see. Sorry, guys. I, the, the quietness, I mean. Um, it's kind of hard to concentrate on what I'm doing and talk on that stuff. That feels right. I put it in my mouth. I'm sorry. There ain't no telling what kind of cancer I'm going to get from doing this. Yeah, the old O-ring feels like paper. Oh, yeah. So now you can really tell. See the 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 new O ring, how it is outside of the outside of the landings. The old O ring is right here. There's another one there. They're squishy, but they're just completely just a ton smaller. So get the new one. The, I thought I felt two in here, but you just don't know sometimes with these kits. And then, uh, of course, also they, I've seen where on Amazon they're charging, one seller will be charging like $10 or something. And it's, of course, we know it's going to be Chinese if it's, you know, something that's $10 versus something that's um, name brand and hundreds of dollars. But uh, you can tell that it's made the same place. And one company is selling it for $10. Another company is selling it for $85. And it's the same stuff. So... Oh no! And then, and I'm buying lawnmower carburetors. I got to look at them really closely because in the photos and stuff because they 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 have a bad habit of selling carburetors that are not completely finished in their fabrication. So, meaning the machining's not done, and you have the air fuel ratio. Um, circuit is non-existent. It's not even there. They don't have the screw in it. Um, I've gotten them sometimes where the screw is in the package. Uh, but the the um, section of the carburetor is missing. Literally. Just not there. It's just a flat spot where there should be a hole that's threaded with um, so, you know 
um, an air circuit going through there, but it's obvious that they didn't do that part of the machining, and then those carburetors never run right. Um, there's multiple O-rings that are that size in here. It's getting windy. But part of what's got me out here is uh, this late at night is it's warm outside. In the winter, um, we're scheduled to have a 72 degree Christmas without rain. That's like, probably the first time in several years now. And I may have to pull the new o-ring back off of that tube so that I can check it and make sure that it matches the one I just pulled out of here. Sounds like the fire barrel is still going strong. And if you'll check my fire barrel video, I, I have like a redneck incinerator I guess you'd call it 255 gallon drums and it's out here burning and it's roaring making a noise probably can't hear it but um yeah that's the right o-ring I probably have O-rings like this. It's just hard to tell if you're going to have the right stuff. And I don't want to take something like this apart. And have to leave it that way for a long period of time. If I don't have the parts, you know. So... Same situation as the other side. Pick the old, old junky O ring off. It's now off. Set the new one in place. And the old one I'm going to set somewhere where I'm not going to lose it just in case so that they we. I'm wearing a hoodie, so I'll put it in here with the other one. Maybe I won't lose them both. Anyway, that way, in case I do make a big stupid mistake and lose a bunch of crap, maybe I'll be able to find the replacement. We don't have to buy a $70 carburetor kit. I told him to not get it, but not get the expensive kit. I wouldn't have gotten it, but... He didn't sometimes we feel like you know we're buying you you pay more so you get more kind of thing but um, or higher quality uh, but very often that is not the case especially when you're buying stuff offline Just gonna wiggle it down in there. Let's see, am I in the? Yeah, I'm in there. See it? And I'm telling you right now, it's gonna be fun. It's a dexterity challenge and a half putting all this crap together at the same time. Cause you got. So now I've got the antifreeze crossover tube, and I gotta find the hole with my seeing eye fingers I think that is that noise wasn't something falling that was the adjust the idle um, adjustment section um bouncing into something and see there should be some more o-rings in there that have that 
But this is antifreeze. It's not seeing that ethanol. And these things are like brand new feeling. They're so supple and squishy. So they should be in great, they're in great shape. So more than likely not something we need to fool too much with. And I'm not pressing the bejesus out of this stuff. I'm just lining it up. So I'm go I'm thinking the last time I did this, I used the bolts to kind of help hold everything in position. And then um, kind of just pushed it all together and slid my finger in there with the spring and the, this a thingy and that a thingy and kind of just line everything yeah that's probably what I did I'm gonna do that so they're kind of just heh, together it's difficult and like I said it's kind of floating in the air right now because of the um, Bolts. Bolts, bolts, bolts. It's floating in the air right now, kind of just being held by the throttle cables and stuff like that. And if you're having to do this kind of work in a dealership, having the, I guess, the dexterity and the ability to balance everything and put it all together uh, be crucial because then that way you don't have to tear these dudes down and go through all of the headache and then but I know there you're working on this stuff at a dealership I guess you the customers going to pay what you, they're told to pay and you're just getting paid by the job so but and carburetor clean outs are really expensive at the dealership guys insane um very very high so learning how to do this stuff yourself is a very good money saver Look at there. It kind of holds it all together without holding it together. And you want to get that in place where it'll start touching down in there. I don't know if you can see it. I'm trying to see it. I can't see that camera. But those two things I talked about got to have that in the right position and you can reach underneath and hold the butterfly shut and it might sound funny or my speech may sound a little weird and that's going to be because I am um holding the spring in my mouth so I'm thinking what I'm going to do is set the spring in there this is going to suck if I drop this dang spring I can tell you that much because my luck it'll be sitting off in the dang machine and I'm never going to find it I'm not going to talk for a minute I gotta get that spring in there just right.
seeds trying to fall. Yep. And then it's trying to fall out. Had to pull the carburetor up because it fell. The spring did, and I'm trying my best not to drop it. And of course, like I basically am doing this with no sight whatsoever because I can't see out here right now at all at what I'm doing. I'm just. struggling to buy it, find that grab that spring i got it between my fingers but it's like a maze of chasing that sucker out of there all right back in again This is the kind of stuff, oh, poopy. This is the kind of stuff I deal with quite often, trying to finagle and do things without being able to see things, and trying to make sure. Oh dang it! I moved the spring again. Stay right there. I'm sure there's a way better way to do this, and um, I'm certain eventually I'm going to be told, but I'm going to try to do it like this because I'm just... Oh, dude, that dang throttle blade flipped all the way around, you little booger. I'm thinking, I think I just got it. Sorry, I just could not hold it where y'all could see what's going on and do that at the same time. There's just no way. So, I'm going back over here. I'm going to hit the throttle on the... Hitting the throttle on the handlebars to make absolutely sure that they're both moving at the same time.
Oh yeah, we're good. I did it. I knew that I would. Oh, no, 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 no. All right. So. Daily Dexterity Challenge. Insert a spring that's freaking impossibly small in between a space that just your fingers just barely fit. Oh, by the way, close your eyes while you do it. And also keep it tethered to the machine so, you know what, it just doesn't... Um... Have a chance of moving in the directions you need it to. Of course, this bolt nut here is the same sort of thing as that spring that's going through some sort of hole. And then, got it started as well. All right. So, I mean, it's going to be the reverse of what you saw in the other video. If this is the first video you see, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't have the ability to attach my videos together. I can put the link. I put all the links together and I put all this stuff in playlists and things like that to try and make sure that everybody can negotiate to the next video because I'm always lo I'm looking up stuff on YouTube all the time. And every time I turn around... Nobody has their videos linked, and I'm like, where's the next one? I want to see it when it's done. And then you have to scour their entire channel, and then that leads to like 15 different rabbit trails. Next thing you know, 3 o'clock in the morning. Frick, I got to get up in three hours. You know, that kind of stuff. And when you're doing something like this and you're trying to do it the way I'm doing it, you don't want to do everything. Um, you don't want to do this stuff and jostle the carburetor really hard, like moving them around a little bit. It's okay. Upside down, sideways, all that stuff. Because they're kind of, these are made that way. They're made to handle that mess because it's, you know, they're dang four-wheeler. They're getting beat to death on top of these little motors. But, um... And I don't know it off the top of my head, and I haven't looked it up, but I'm wondering what kind of horsepower a 700 or a 650 CFM Kawasaki engine puts out. But um, I'm just going to reverse. That should get us um, working again without spraying fuel everywhere. Um, so what I'm going to do is... We got one of those elect. Oh man, no. Okay, it didn't come off. Sweet. All right. So the way this is set up is freaking terrible. Uh, I wish they didn't do it this way. But you got to use really small um, needlenose pliers. This is the fuel line. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna go ahead and set the fuel line back on. I'm sure the carburetors are don't. Are not going to have to be level is I'm going to turn the machine on I can remember where everything is I want to turn it has a fuel shut off over here that's a weird noise they always do it all of them do it so that I guess they're supposed to but I don't know what the heck that is so don't ask me because I don't know it has something to do with the transmission. Let's see if we have any leaks. I smell fuel, but it's not leaking from the same spot if it's leaking at all. A little bit's weeping out of the bowl, but that's probably overflow from not being in the right 
I mean, it's not level, so. All right, the front carburetor's leaking out the at the bottom of the little weeping hole or whatever out the bowl, the overflow, whatever you want to call that. So that fixed the. Yeah. We're not leaking, so that fixed it. I'll get this thing back together. I might do a ride video. Uh, we got some tires rubbing. We put some. He put some oversized tires on his machine, and they're rubbing real bad. In the front. It's got spacers and all these things to wear out all the bearings. Um, but it looks like we got her dead. So, those will work fine. It's got high octane fuel in it. And hold on. 90 ish. So. Sorry, I have, sometimes I flip that thing around and I'm just right on my face. I'm sorry. I know I'm not that good looking or nothing, but don't mean to scare y'all too bad. Uh, we'll get this guy going. Y'all, I don't think y'all have seen what it looks like. It's a pretty, it's got a lift kit, you know. It's a pretty cool looking machine. It's got some big old tires on it. It had some mud I think it had mud. Um, I don't cuss, so what? Mud female dogs on it. Had mud female dogs on it. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, there's, dude. I, I'm telling you guys, it, it, they look like tractor teat cleated tires that are, with the cleats are that dang tall on them. You just look at the yard with. The four wheeler, and then you have a mud hole because it just eats the grass. It tears, rips down through the top soil. It's ridiculous. Those tires. If you're thinking about getting those tires, they're only good if you're going to mud bogging. And I mean, it's got to be some soupy mess, like those competitions where you see the guys just trying to uh, go full force into a mud hole. Uh, but we're going to keep working on this thing. Sorry, I've got ADD brain, so. Kind of going off on a tangent on other stuff and don't need to. Well, we're going to try to get these front tires quit rubbing the fenders so much. Because it's not working out very good. It's like, it, it binds up the front end, you know. And what good is the tires if they mess up your drivability of your machine. So I'm thinking we could take the... spacers off the front maybe tuck them in a little more and that'll bring the turning radius because when you when you put the wheel farther out instead of turning close to the center of the axis of the turn it's turning farther out so it swings the tire like that instead of turning it like this it starts to make the tire swing forward and backward a whole lot more so I'm hoping that that'll fix that problem. Got the rear end rebuilt, ish. Um, the rear end looks really good. Um, it just needed that center section replaced. Got all of that together. Moved the machine out. Started pouring gas out the carburetors. And we just fixed that. So I'm going to get all of it bolted back up. That's a super easy little video. Um, go search another thing where somebody's getting incredibly intricate in rebuilding these carburetors. I'm not going to do that on this machine because I'm not going to open a can of worms that doesn't need to be opened right now. Um, I will have a video like that because I have a machine almost identical to this one. And it's definitely going to have to have that done. Probably have to tank, tank dry, drained and everything. It's going to be a friggin' nightmare. But I've either got to fix the machine and sell it or fix it and use it around here. Which I don't have a whole lot of stuff to do with it. But anyhow, we'll get her done. Um, hand cam. We'll get it done. Like, share, subscribe. Check out some of my other videos. Like, like I said, ADD with... Um, blindness and stuff. I tend to go off on tangents and talk about stuff that has nothing to do with what we're doing. But it's just what I do. I I, I can't help it sometimes. 
Um, sharing the videos around with all of your social medias and stuff will help me out tremendously. Um, especially to groups and things that you know uh, or might be interested in these sorts of things. Because uh, I'm not a... I'm not a social media person, so I don't have Instagram and all that, and it's just going to, it, that'll take up way too much time, and I don't have that much help in any of that kind of stuff, And but anyway, thank you so much for watching, God bless you guys, and uh, read God's word, oh, just thought of something. Saw something on another channel. I want to. Told you, ADD brain. I want to suggest. Um, check out Micah Tyler's new album. The whole thing is just amazing. Um, any of the songs on that new album, pretty much any of Micah Tyler's stuff, I love it. Uh, he's got several albums, but his newest one is the best one yet. Thank you guys. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, that's going to tell you a lot of stuff every time I post this mess. Bye. God bless you guys.